Hello, and welcome to Real Talk, a irregular new series uh, where we talk about, you know, we play a fishing thing in a video game, and we talk about life. And don't worry, I'm not going to be like, oh, I have all the wisdom in the world to share with you. No, I, I'm going to try and keep this <laughs> real uh, and down to earth. I am in my late 20s. I still have plenty of life left to live. But people are starting to subscribe to this channel, people are starting to watch these videos, and I figure it might be nice to have a series, which it doesn't happen too often, but just a series where we talk about life, and maybe, I don't know, like sharing some experiences I've had, and then you can share your experiences in the comments section with me, and um, just kind of swap stories. Today we are fishing in the Elder Scrolls Online. Because there is a fishing achievement in that game which is one of the longest grinds in the game so I'm going to continue working my way towards that as we talk. Anyway, the thing I wanted to talk about today was something that's been on my mind for a little while. It's the idea of your creative ambition as kind of a hindrance to your actual aspirations of being the person you want to be and doing the things that you want to do. So. Let me explain. For example, after university, which I went to for creative writing, and did fairly well at uh, in creative writing, I then stopped writing mostly for about five years. I still kept up a blog and I still did the occasional short story, but for the most part, compared to what I was doing, I just lost the desire to write. And I'll be honest, I still don't know that it's completely come back, but I'm also combining you know, my aspirations of writing with my aspirations of doing YouTube, of, of this channel, of making videos, of making entertaining, funny gameplay content. And that is something I also stopped doing a little bit earlier, I think from the end of my A-levels, I just stopped. And I don't remember why I stopped in particular, it literally might have just been that I got distracted by other things, but I remember why I was hesitant to start again. I was hesitant to start again because you know, there are already so many f famous YouTube channels out there that get so many thousands of views, and when you start a YouTube channel, I don't know if you know this or if you have tried this, it is incredibly difficult to get more than a couple of views on your videos. So on the one hand, we've got a writer who's not writing because he's burnt out on writing, but also um, there's this other aspect, which I haven't really spoken about yet, but I can't really stick to one idea long enough for it to become a novel, but that's kind of a different problem to the one I'm talking about today because that's more related to ADHD or at least what I perceive to be ADHD but across both of these things there is this general idea of well if I can't be successful at it and if I'm not making it for anyone to see then what's the point in doing it but as you can see today I've got this lovely YouTube channel with lots of videos on it um, and depending on when you're watching this that's me being an optimist uh, I might still not have the biggest viewer base in the world and that's because at some point I decided actually I can tell you exactly which point it was after my nan died um, something about going to her funeral and hearing about her life uh, shook something loose in me in a good way um, inspired me to just do the thing I wanted to do. Who care if nobody saw it? Like, it, I feel a legitimate sense of joy and catharsis in every stage of making a video, in recording it, in editing it, uh, in rendering it, in creating metadata for it, creating the thumbnail for it, uploading it, sharing it. Like, it's all a process which brings me dopamine I guess and while I still had and still do have and perhaps always will have this voice nagging in the back of my head of why are you spending so much effort on this thing that hardly anyone is watching I was listening to a podcast last night uh, always open it's a fantastic podcast that you should go listen to where someone called BK uh, put a point which I believe in brilliantly and reminded me myself as well uh, that it doesn't matter that you're not meeting some kind of arbitrary goal. If you are doing something which makes you happy, that is the ultimate goal in life, right? Obviously she said it like in her own words a little bit differently, but that's a general message. And it's something I try to live my life by, like, people often forget that the overall goal in life is to be happy. So if you are doing something which makes you happy, but you are telling yourself that it is not worth doing because of these arbitrary reasons of success, uh, then if you stop doing it because of that, then you're going to be less happy than you would be 
if you just did it without someone's arbitrary notion of success being met. And this doesn't just apply to making videos, it can apply to anything that makes you happy. Um, but it's something I've been applying to this channel for ages, but it's something I've only just started applying to writing. For those of you who don't know, I'm on another attempt to kickstart my writing again, and I think it's going pretty well so far. But people keep asking me when I tell them about it, like, are you going to take this further? Are you going to, like, write a novel and everything? And even when I explain to them why I find it so difficult to write a full-on novel, I don't think people get it. But the thing I'm also trying to explain to them is, it doesn't really matter to me at this stage. It might later. But it doesn't matter to me at this stage if I become a super, quote-unquote, successful writer. Right now, what is sustaining me, what is giving me joy in life is the fact that I am finding joy in just writing again and sharing my short stories with the world. And for you, it might not be video making or writing, it might be baking, or it might be painting, or it might be gardening, like making your garden look nice if that brings you joy. Um, you know, you don't have to have the best looking garden on the street, just like something that makes you smile when you look at it. You don't have to be good at painting to enjoy painting and being happy with what you are able to create. That's not to say the pursuit of self-improvement isn't a worthy one, uh, that it's not an important one, but it's one that you shouldn't let be, or in my opinion, you should try not to let be stifled by the expectations of what other people can do. And it's easier said than done, it's still something I struggle with every single day. For instance, we have the Weekly Waypoint series on this channel which I really enjoy making, uh, but compared to some of my gameplay videos, those videos have been getting less views. And while it's never been a problem before, there's now a part of my brain that goes, why are you bothering with this series when the other series is the one that brings in the views? I keep having to, you know, remind myself to have the right perspective of, I'm still doing this for me, I'm still doing this because I find it fun to do. Me and my friend Reese are working on a project called Dimension Jam, and um, that's something that's, you know, we're starting a new YouTube channel, so again, it's not going to have a lot of viewers, it's not going to have a lot of subscribers for a very long time, unless we get extremely lucky. But it's something we're going to do because it brings us creative fulfilment, it's going to nurture our ability to work as a team, and it's just gonna be fun. And when I was younger, my aspirations were huge. I wanted to be a famous novelist. I didn't just want to be someone who wrote for fun. I wanted to be a YouTube channel with millions of subscribers. I didn't just want to be a channel which made videos for fun. But again, as I mentioned, the idea of being successful in that way is the idea of I am happy in life because I am successful, and I am reminded of an old Game Grumps episode when they were playing Ocarina of Time of two men who can be described as pretty successful in their careers, right? And they were talking about, and I think this was in like the Fire Temple, I think there's a Fire Temple in that game, I don't know Ocarina very well, um, but if you want to find that episode, they were talking about how when they were younger they assumed that they would get successful uh, and that would be it, they would be happy, they would be you know, everything that they wanted in life would be there, but now they are at that stage in their life and they find that the goalpost for happiness has moved, has changed and become something different. And I think that's something that's very important to hear. This reminder that happiness is not something that you can just chase and grab and have forever, it's a constant changing state of, you know, what you need and want from life. And you know, create a fulfillment, while it would be nice to be super successful and have all these views and sell all these books and be able to write them in the first place, um, you can't just assume that being able to be that successful would be the key to unlocking happiness. It's a constant uh, moving goalpost, I guess I said earlier, is the way to say it. So while striving for success is important, it's also important to just have fun with what you're doing on the journey there. And it doesn't even have to be something creative as well. Um, you know, hobbies are important too, it's not quite the same thing, it's not quite productive in that way, but make sure that you're also taking time in your life to just do the things you enjoy doing, like video games! And obviously, everything in life is a balance, don't just let your life be absolutely overtaken by doing nothing but playing video games, but um, it's, you know, happiness is a difficult thing to quantify. And God knows I still haven't found it, like, <laughs> as this general, ah, I am one with myself, I am whole in life, you know, I'm still trying to figure out my potential ADHD and my anxiety and all that shenanigans, but um, I'm personally, as I'm seeing you know, I've started these, I've started creating these YouTube shorts, 
And as it turns out, that is what I should have been doing since the get-go, because that is the algorithm that gives and feeds and has brought people into this channel, uh, and I am very grateful for it. It has just given me the opportunity to reflect on like, well, this feels awesome, but it already felt awesome what I was doing without this. And I'm so glad this exists, and I do worry that one day the algorithm is going to change and dry up and we're not going to be able to figure out whatever's next. Uh, but for now, uh, you know, I didn't mean to turn this into a thing about YouTube Shorts, but for now I'm very happy whenever I put YouTube Short out, especially when it hits like that kind of cap of 1.6k views seems to be the kind of view cap that the algorithm will give you unless you really make something that goes truly viral. Um, yeah, it brings me joy. But so did making things before YouTube Shorts. Anyway, that's enough pontificating. I'm not going to keep repeating my points. I think I've made my point. But feel free to leave a comment telling me uh, what makes you happy, what you would like to do more of. Obviously, it's not always as simple as just doing it. People have uh, kids sometimes or a marriage. You know, people have more responsibilities than I do. And I would do well to remember that. But um, I still say, like, please try and make time for yourself uh, to do these things, to explore more of the things that make you happy. Anyway, I don't know if anyone's really going to watch this because it's different to my usual comedic video game stuff. Uh, but I just I just felt like trying out this new Real Talk series. Um, I mean, it was already kind of going around in my head last night of a thing that I could do. Uh, but then I was like, I, I want to combine it with some calming B-roll. And then I was like, how about fishing in video games? That sounds nice. What would I call it? And I was like... Real talk. That's perfect. And then I looked it up and there is a moderately successful YouTube channel called Real Talk and they talk about movies, but I prefer my real talk, damn it. <laughs> Who knows, maybe one day I'll have to turn it into like real chatter. 